Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about fist bus. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, why do employers use the fist bus test to qualify developers when the developer is perfectly capable without fist bus? Because if you can't solve the fist bus, fist bus problem, then it's very likely that you are pretty bad at software development or you at the very least have a hard time you know performing under pressure it's similar to ask I mean uh, the FISPAS algorithm is probably one of the simplest uh, like it, it's not it, it is a computer let's call it for the sake of argument the computer science the algorithm type of thing it is an algorithm but th the thing is that the whole key to solving the FISBUS problem is one part that you need to know what the modules. Uh, you don't have to do it through modulus, but it's probably easiest to do it with the modules uh, modulus uh, operator. Uh, the, the the thing is though that if you can't solve such a problem, where do we draw the line? How do I, as an evaluator of you, know if you know anything if you can't do the basics? It's sort of like, if I, should we draw the line at Hello World? If you can't do a Hello World application, how likely are you to be able to, I don't know, create a full stack, soft, um, full stack uh, web, uh, like web shop or something like that? How do you get, because it's sort of like, if you're so, it's, in fitness it's the same thing. How can I trust that someone who is fairly overweight, for example, would be able to run a marathon? Maybe they have. Maybe they have done it a million times. It's just that they have certain conditions of, like, I don't know. It's just very difficult for me to believe that that is the case because the norm for someone who can run a marathon is that they're fairly in fairly good shape. Same thing with software developers. The norm is that if you have something very complicated in terms of computer science, the algorithm, you sort of know that, yeah, this is a, actually a very hard problem to solve. But the FISBUS algorithm is sort of like, it's something that you might give on a test to people like in their first course of programming and the reason why people usually use this and as, as an evaluation is more one part is because they want to keep a very light recruitment process or something like that but they still have to have something to check that you at the very least know how to write some basic software and the FISBUS algorithm is a very simple way to do that because you're not going to be able to solve that if you don't know anything about software development. If you know nothing at all, if you're just basically sitting there talking out of your ass and you don't know how to program whatsoever, you're not going to solve it. If you have done any programming whatsoever up like at all, it is within your grasp. It should be something that you should be able to do. It's sort of like saying, like, oh, iterate through this uh, array of elements and, I don't know, search through an array and pick an element based on something, something. A beginner who's never coded in their entire life won't be able to solve that problem, but someone who has done any programming will be able to do that. The sad part is that this level of evaluation is vastly too little to figure out if someone is actually good at software development or not. So when you say oh, you, that they could make do without it, well, what type of profile are we hiring for? Because the only company that would use a FISBUS algorithm to evaluate the, a candidate is either some, a, a company who's looking for like the bare bone minimum coding uh, um, experience from a candidate like we were talking about, they're not even out of school yet because a student will be able to do the FISBUS algorithm or something similar uh, way before they um, uh, graduate. The only time I've seen someone use this, and I actually have been exposed to this, was when I was, uh, I was uh, applying for a position or rather I was being recruited by a consultancy. And the reason why they did it, I didn't understand that at the time, but uh, the reason why they did it is because they leverage something that is so nefarious and so bad that if I ever come to power, they're going to be the first on my list. So what they will do is that they will just make sure that they have the basics in whoever the, the consultant that they are hiring. They're basically just fine trying to check that you know some coding 
at all and then they try to get you to lose to leave your job so that they can sell you to somebody that is what they're doing because you are basically just a piece of commodity to them so they're gonna try to sell you the problem with that is that one part is that they're now not trying to actually get the best person for the job to the uh, to the company they're trying to get training for you to increase your value for free and it's sort of like a shotgun thing because the, th the beautiful th thing about consultants and consultancies is that if the if they can find a customer for you they're gonna start making money from you because you're just a unit and then when the company realizes that oh no this person is sort of not able to do the thing we need them for or like there's a mismatch they can just fire you and then the consultancy will try to get you to another place and the kind of just until you have some type of higher value so they can find somewhere you fit if that doesn't work out they're just gonna cancel your contract and so the whole purpose of this or like the whole like the, the thing that they are emphasizing is not the quality of the relationship and the software developer and like making sure that that is a good match for the customer and like they're not really about the customer here they are about selling someone they put it's sort of like these companies where like they have a really shitty product and they create a really low quality thing and they put everything else into marketing and trying to build up the brand or something like that because they're uh, they're trying to sell they're trying to solve the problem not through quality not through like transparency and so forth and so forth they're trying to sell so that they will make money that is what they're doing this is why I tell people never ever trust a consultancy ever for any reason you always have to evaluate the consultants the reason why I say that is not just for this specific instance it is because I interview consultants on an almost daily basis for different positions and you can almost uh, as a rule take their CV and wipe your ass with it you have no idea what you're getting they might they're not gonna lie about previous uh, positions but if your consultancies or like the agencies that you hire people from oh we have the best consultants or we do rigorous testing etc etc <laughs> they don't not at all not whatsoever well, one part is because as I said most consultancies they don't actually have good software developers who are like part of like their own hiring process they are salespeople they are just as uh, like I ignorant as higher management in your own company or whatever you're doing right most of them don't know what a good software developer looks like they just talk as if they do and then they send you basically anybody who sort of fits the description based on the exact same uh, way of working as any recruiter and the average recruiter doesn't know what a good software developer looks like and they can talk about testing and so forth and so forth but that you have to remember guys th their goal is not to help your company their goal is to get you to pay them for a software developer and most of the time they don't actually know how good the person is and they don't I mean they are interested in a good working relationship but if you're paying and you don't know if you're buying something and you don't yourself know what a good software developer looks like well then the trust is sort of broken right but it doesn't matter to them because they can always just say that oh wasn't this person a fit and then they throw that person a year that person gets fired and they just play replace someone with the next thing it's sort of like if you are a manufacturer and you have someone in your supply chain who's just selling you shit over and over but every time something doesn't work they just smile a nice smile to you and trick you into buying the next thing and the next thing and slowly killing your company by being let's just say not a good partner that is how you can view most consultancies I would go as far as to say in almost all of them and that is maybe opinionated but trust me when I say this when you start to see a pattern when you were when you interview at this point I've lost count of various consultants from different places and so forth and it's really not a it's nobody's fault if that makes sense it's just that similar to how you know a nightclub or something like that needs a bouncer or like a security guard because some people are going to get drunk too drunk and like sort of misbehave it's not that they're bad people it's just that they can't control the situation or they are ignorant or like whatever there are ex there are circumstances as to why they do the thing that they are doing similar here like 
just make sure that you have some way of evaluating your own people because the fist bus thing that is something that is well that's something that a consultancy would ask a candidate to uh, to complete but no serious software company would leave it at that so what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why people ask you to fix the fist bus problem or something very simple or something similar like that when you could in theory do other things is because they just have a very simple evaluation process usually and it's the same thing with these computer science and the harder questions and so forth they're trying to figure out if you know any type of coding now the fist bus algorithm is a very good example of where you know they're literally just checking can you write a single line of code because it's a very simple problem just as if someone asks you something hilarious like can you sort an array can you find an element in an array these are if you see that in an interviewing process you can basically bet on that they're either going to have you doing something really basic or they're completely ignorant of what software development is all about or they don't really care so much how good you are whatsoever and that can be a good thing if you're a beginner but it can also be as I said like they can be consultancies and so forth where they don't prioritize the quality of their consultants because they think that they, because their their strategy is to sell and selling in some cases might be easier for them or like that's what they're doing than having quality people because trust me when I say this the consultancies are having problems finding quality developers as well so for some it's sort of like any product really some people have high quality brand companies and some people have cheap garbage that they just you know try to fling at anybody who's willing to pay them for it same sort of deal doesn't really sh uh, uh, it's not bad wrong uh, good or bad it really comes down to you as the person who's buying these sorts of services to make sure that you know what you're buying have a great day